Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do a full face review and it's kind of full face. There's a couple of products that I don't have from this brand, but I have accumulated quite a lot from Jones Road Beauty. I had never used anything from them. I had had quite a few people ask me to review them and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna buy close to a full face. About a week after I made my purchase, Jones Road Beauty actually reached out to me and they sent me, I think, three additional products. So I'll try to tell you the ones that they sent me as I get to them. But if you don't know, Jones Row Beauty was started by Bobby Brown. Roughly, I would say probably about five years after she left Bobby Brown Cosmetics. I'm assuming that's because she likely had a non-compete. I don't know. But she did start Jones Row Beauty and I feel like her ethos from Bobby Brown kind of went over into Jones Row because when she was head of Bobby Brown, it was very much about like a natural, almost kind of no makeup look, don't need a lot of products, just the version, the best version of yourself, kind of before the whole Instagram glam type era makeup came out. And that is what Jones Row Beauty is. It is touted to be a clean company. It is all about really just enhancing what you already have, not necessarily covering it up with a smaller amount of products. So they have a couple of what they consider their star products. I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. The first product that I'm gonna talk about is probably the one that they are most known for. It is the one that I think was their first product. They have since added on and they just launched a new powder bronzer, which I do wanna try, I don't have that one. But I feel like they are consistently coming out with new products. But this is the Miracle Balm. And again, this was what they kind of launched the company on. I got the shade Bronze. So this Miracle Balm, and most of their face products are based in oils, quite a bit of oils and wax. Now this particular product does have beeswax in it, so it is not vegan. It has castor oil in it. Castor oil seems to be the oil of choice for a lot of the face products, which tends to be very hydrating. It is comprised of fatty acids and while Everything that I have found says it's very safe for the skin and beneficial. I have also found that you need to do a patch test in case you can be a little sensitive to it. So in these bombs, you need to take your finger and really break the seal until you can get into the good stuff underneath the outer layer and then use that in between your fingers with a brush, however you wanna do it to apply it to the skin. So this is the shade bronze. I got this one because I really wanted to use it as a bronzer. What I have found is that while it definitely looks bronze in the pot and on the finger, when I go in and blend it in, there's like a stitch of bronze color to it, but that color, that shade that I really wanted for a bronzer disappears on me. And I'm left with a very pretty luminous finish, as you can see. However, it is also very tacky. So that is something to consider depending on what your needs and wants are. I do feel like the majority of this brand is geared toward drier skin types. And I think, I feel like a lot of their marketing is also geared towards more mature skin types, but not all mature skin types are dry. So, you know, if you like the idea of these products, but you have very oily skin, I'm not necessarily gonna recommend some of them, especially this one. Now, I'm not gonna use this one today because it is probably out of all of them my least favorite product. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the color is not what I wanted it to be. And I just can't get past the tackiness. It was just a little too shiny for me. A little too shiny, a little too tacky. And again, I got it for a bronzer and that is, it's just not a bronzer. I couldn't get it to show up on my skin for that purpose. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this comes in nine shades. It is 1.76 ounces, which, which is a good amount of product and it retails for $38. Let's go ahead and start on the complexion and I am going to start with one of the face pencils. So I got two of these face pencils. One of them I got to use as a corrector, and that is shade six. So the face pencils 
come like this. They're a little bit of a chubbier pencil than you would typically find in like an eyeliner. There are 25 shades. They're 2.9 grams of product, which is a decent amount, and it retails for $25. Now they have concealer shades. They have, you know, obviously face shades. They're meant to be used all over the face. And then they have some that are neutralizers, which is what shade six is. And that's what I chose for my corrector. So this is the light peach neutralizer. So that's what I'm gonna use as my corrector. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I actually really like this. I kind of went in with the notion that I was not going to. Now, according to the how to use, you basically place the product where you want it to be and then tap it out with your finger. The warmth of your finger on your skin is gonna help the texture of that crayon to kind of sink in more. So I had every intention of not liking this because I don't typically like stick type concealers or really even cream concealers. So I kind of went in with preconceived notions of how it was gonna work out, but I actually like this as the corrector. I just feel like it does a nice job of covering up that darkness without being too heavy, even though, as you can see, I'm adding more than one layer on top of each other. Now, if you have insanely dry under eyes, this might not work. However, it is comprised of oils and waxes. It does have the castor oil in it. So that is the shade six in the face crayon. Now let's talk about the WTF foundation or what the foundation. It comes in 12 shades. It comes in a pot with 1.14 ounces. So it's a little bit more than a typical liquid foundation. And it is $44. Now I got the shade beige and this is a tinted moisturizer balm meets traditional foundation. It says it is a light to medium coverage, so we'll talk about that as we apply it. It is definitely more of a balm consistency than a liquid. I mean, obviously you can see it's not coming out of the pot. I just like to take a spatula, you could do this with your fingers if you wanted to, and take some out, it onto my fingers, rub together, and I'm gonna apply this like I would a moisturizer. I have tried applying it with a brush, and I don't, I didn't feel like it blended in as well. So that amount that I showed you just did my two cheeks chin. It does, this does have a very distinct scent to it. And I feel like people have said, yeah, the Miracle Balm does too. I'm not sure what that is from because I know it doesn't have any added fragrance, but there are some people I have seen that do not like the scent of it and, and can't tolerate it. I don't find it lingers. I smell it as I'm applying it and that's about it. So I'm gonna take a little bit more up on my forehead and blend it down my neck. So this is the foundation. I can still see, honestly, there's not a ton of difference. I'm gonna be honest. I find this is not a medium coverage. This is a light coverage, a sheer to light coverage. In my opinion, I can still see my redness poking through. And really, I feel like it. the majority of what it did was add some luminosity to my skin. I do like the color. I got some in my brows. So again, this is full of the, the oils and the waxes. So if you are not someone who wants a luminous finish, this is not gonna be for you. I'm gonna take a little bit more on the back of my hand. I'm gonna take a little bit on a brush and show me building it up on my redness. So you can see the redness right here. And if I pat some in, covers it a little bit more, but it's still there. So it's not, again, this is not something that I would say is buildable to a medium. It's just, it's sheer to light, but a very pretty finish. Nonetheless, just depending on, you know, what you're looking for. This is also pretty tacky. I would never personally wear this without setting it down because it would end up being like the Miracle Bomb for me and just too tacky. Now, even the Miracle Bomb set down continue to be pretty tacky. This one, I'm able to kind of control it a little bit with some powder. Now let's go into the other face pencil that I got, which is the shade eight, which says that it is light medium and that it also has peach undertones. It is definitely not as peach as the neutralizer. So I'm gonna use this on top of that neutralizer. And I'm actually gonna press this in with a brush. I feel like if I use my fingers too much on this kind of step, I'm gonna use my fingers down here at the bottom, it can kind of take the product away. 
So I'm just gonna tap it in on top of that corrector. Gives a little bit more coverage, but I'm gonna be honest in saying I prefer using this corrector under my Chantecaille. I feel like using the corrector and this face pencil on top doesn't do as much in the form of coverage or forgiveness for my under eyes. But again, this brand is not about full coverage. So, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna fault it for not being something that it's not marketed to be. Now, the face pencils are also meant to obviously be worked around your face. So if you have some areas that need a little bit more coverage, I tend to get a little bit more red around my nose. I'll kind of press it in around that area. My chin definitely gets red. It gives some extra coverage. I'm not gonna use this on my cheeks. I don't love this on my cheeks. It kind of, if I try to use too much of it on top of this foundation, the foundation underneath separates. It doesn't lay right. And while they are meant to be used together, I think they are meant to be used together very sparingly because trying to get any more, you know, too much coverage with this, it's, it, they just don't mesh that well. So if I'm gonna use it around my face, I, you know, again, I just kind of use it around my nose and my chin and leave it at that because I just find it doesn't work as well on my cheeks. Now let's talk about blush. I got this blush and it is the Lip and Cheek Stick. And I got the shade English Rose. It has 8.4 grams of product and it is $34. So this is the shade English Rose. Just a very pretty pink shade. Like I do with most of my cream blushes, I like to pick it up with a brush and then apply it. So again, this is oil and wax based. The pigment is very good, if you can see. And I think it's a very pretty pink flush of color. It's tacky. I think that's, that's something that is a trend here when we're using all of the oils and waxes that are in these products. They just are a little bit tackier. So if you're someone who doesn't like to wear lip gloss because your hair can get stuck in it when you go outside, it's gonna be the same kind of thing for the face products. Now I am gonna use a separate powder because they don't have a face powder to my knowledge. I don't think they really promote powdering these products, but again, for me, I need to. I'm also gonna use a separate bronzer because I got all of these products before they launched their powder bronzer. The Miracle Balm bronze didn't work for me in that aspect, so I still need bronzer. So I'm gonna use that and then we'll come back and finish up. Now, one of the products that they sent over to me is called the Best Blush, and these are their powder blushes. These come in five shades and they're $28. Now, I really like this blush, but let me say, while I'm putting it on. I love the color. I like the formula. It can easily be used as an eyeshadow, in my opinion, the same as the eyeshadow that I'm gonna be using, I have used as blush. 2.5 grams is not a lot of product for a blush. And let me, let me just interrupt that by saying this is very similar to the English Rose shade that I use for cream blush, so they layer really well together. But again, 2.5 grams. I picked out a couple of other my favorite blushes to kind of show you the difference. The Jane Iredell blushes have 3.2 grams. So not a ton more, but more. Now the RMS blushes, you know I absolutely love, are $7 more, so they are $35, but they have seven grams of product in them. So almost three times the amount of product that come in the Jones Road. Now, if you like the small package for travel. You know you're not gonna go through an entire blush. They are still very good blushes. So again, this is Sandy, and it's very similar to that pink English Rose. Now, I'm gonna do something I normally do, and I'm gonna do pink on the complexion and peach on the eyes, but that's just how it worked out with what I chose. So I purchased three eyeshadows from the Jones Rogue collection, and then they sent over their eyeliner. So this is the Best Pencil, which is $22. These are the Best Eyeshadows, which are 2.9 grams of product for $25 each, and they come in 15 shades. So the same packaging as the blush, and again, this matte shade I have used as blush, and it, it's great. So I got two of those, and then I got one of the Just A Sec eyeshadows, which come in this little pot. They're kind of like a, a uh, creamier powder version, almost like a putty. And these come in six shades and they're $26. So 
I'm gonna start with the best eyeshadow in the shade Peach Peachy Nude. And I'm gonna use this in my crease. So again, we're looking at one eyeshadow. They're $25. There's a lot to be said about how that's pretty expensive for an eyeshadow because it is. I have in the past paired single shadows and their prices to prices of those in a palette with the, roughly the same amount of product. For instance, the Natasha Denona Biba palette, which is one of my favorites. These are all 2.5 grams, which is only 0.4 grams less than what come in these shadows. And there are 12 of them. Now I understand that that's a very expensive palette. It comes down to roughly $10 a shadow for about the same amount. But I also understand that sometimes people don't want to mess with palettes because you know, you have, we all have our favorite shades and palettes. And when that runs out, like nobody's gonna go and buy a whole nother palette for that shade. So it's nice to have single ones like this so that you can kind of build your own favorite shades and you know that when it runs out, you don't have to buy a whole new palette. So there's pros and cons for both, but I do just want to, to make you aware of the prices for all of the products. So, I mean, we know I'm all like this. This is a peachy eyeshadow. Formula's great, blends out great. I have no issues with their eyeshadows. They're probably some of my favorite products out of the whole line. Now, I also got Champagne. It's just a yellow, kind of a yellow gold champagne shade. So what I've been doing is I first lay it down with a brush like I do many shimmer shades like this on my lid. And then I'll go in and top it off with another layer of my finger and it just adds like a, another pop of intensity. But again, this, this shade does translate very yellow on the eye, at least on mine. And then I have been taking the Best Pencil and this is in the shade Brown. And I use this as, you know, an eyeliner. I really, I actually really enjoy this eyeliner. It's very easy to apply. It doesn't tug on the lids. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit here on the outer corner and then take like a smudge brush and kind of use that to deepen the outer corner just a little bit. I feel like it goes a long way too. This is probably like the seventh time that I've used this eyeliner and I have not felt the need to sharpen it at all. Now I'm gonna swatch the just a sec, but I don't think it's gonna show up on the eye look that I have now. But I got, surprise, surprise, I got the shade Golden Peach. These are very different than the Shimmer Best eyeshadows. These are even described in the description as a wash of color. They're similar to almost like a topper. It has a lot of sheen. So I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see. See, as I earn my hand, that is catching the light, but it is not opaque at all compared to the champagne shade. So see how that one shows up way more. So the Just A Sec eyeshadows are gonna be more, again, for that wash of color. Or if you have something you wanna add a little bit of sheen to, like if you just wanna have a pop of a shimmer in the inner corner or in the middle of your lid to catch the light as you move your head, that's what the Just A Sec shadows are gonna be for versus the typical round panned best eyeshadows. Then I'm gonna take more of that peachy nude under the eyes to kind of finish off that part of it. Now I'm gonna use one of my very favorite products from the line and that's the mascara. And I'm gonna tell you, when I first used it, I was like, what's all the hype about? Cause I have heard a lot of stuff about this mascara and it did just didn't hit with me when I first used it. But after letting the air kind of get into it for a few days, then it really started popping for me. I do prefer this mascara with a primer that's the case with all of my mascaras. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to use a primer. So this is 8.5 grams, which is pretty standard for mascara, and it's $26. One of my very favorite mascaras of all time is Chantecaille, so I am in no place to speak about the cost of a mascara. Yes, you can get some cheaper, and you can get some way more expensive. I feel like this is a good middle of the road price. It does come with a very large, natural bristle brush, and it does have a little bit of a curve in it. So I'm gonna start on this side. 
because of the size of the brush, it's very easy to get it on your lids. I will say that. I don't know that there's been a time that I have used this mascara that it has not transferred onto my lid, but it's easily buffed off. Okay, so this is with one coat of the mascara. Again, other than the kind of transfer to my eyeshadow, it's very easy to apply. This is two coats. Now I will say this mascara is very easy to apply on top of itself. It doesn't dry too fast. So you could even do three, four, however many coats you want, and it's gonna keep building those lashes up. I feel like even without primer, this is pretty impressive. You can only imagine what it looks like with primer. Mascara is definitely a win in my book. Now the only thing left is lips, and they sent over the Golden Shimmer Cool Gloss. So I chose the shade because I felt like this was just a Mandy shade. They do have 10 shades in this. They are 14 grams and $22 a piece. So I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see this. I've swatched so much on this hand, but it really truly is just kind of a shimmer gloss. Not gonna give me much color at all. And while the shimmer is not like chunky particles of glitter, it is there and it helps make it look even more shiny in my opinion, which I like. And I think this, let me see if it's got some kind of mint in it. It's got menthol. So that's giving it like a kind of a minty feel. And I think helps add to the coolness of the cool gloss. That is it. That is my almost full face of Jones Row Beauty. I'm going to do a very quick recap and tell you that my favorite products from the line are the face pencil in six as a corrector. I almost said concealer. As a corrector, I do really like the blush. I really like the eyeshadows. And I really, really like the mascara. Now, the other things are fine. I have had no issues with them. I do like the foundation. I don't think it's groundbreaking for me compared to some of the other foundations I have in my collection, but it's good um, for what it is, for a light coverage, luminous foundation. The only thing that, again, I think is pretty obvious wasn't the best for me is the Miracle Balm. Oh, and the face pencil is a concealer. I just don't, I don't love that. And I don't feel like it really blends as well in my skin as I have seen it do for other people. Maybe I'm using it wrong, but I'm using it like the instructions say, and it just wasn't my favorite. The blush is fine. It, it's a cream blush. It doesn't stand out to me in any other way than that. I have used it as a lipstick, and I think I kind of prefer it as a lipstick to a cream blush, but it's not bad as a cream blush. Sometimes it's hard for cream blushes to kind of set themselves apart for me. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I will have everything listed in the link down below. Oh, and if you are a makeup artist, they do offer a pro discount program. So definitely check into that as well if you're interested in using any of these products in your kit. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.